What's up, Bakugan fans? It's D-Heart continuing the series of all gears in each faction. Today I'm going to look at the darkest gears that we have for the Bakugan Pro trading card game. So, quick recap on how a gear works. If I have one of these cards in my hand, I can have three copies of each. I'd pay the cost, two. And what i do if this was a character card, because I don't have one in front of me, if this was my character card, I would pay the two, slide it underneath the character card, and these stats would be added to my character's stats throughout the rest of the game. When you wanted to replace one of the Baku gear on your character card, and you have another one, you pay the cost, and you discard the Baku gear that was attached to your Bakugan, and you put on the new Baku gear, and you have new stats. So we're gonna go through, in order of cost, all the darkest gear cards, and we're gonna see which ones are worth picking up when you're playing the Bakugan Pro trading card game and building your decks. So first off, two cost, we have Scorching Swords. It came in a lot of different Bakugan packs. Uh, very, very common from Armored Alliance. What this gear does is it gives you 100 B and one damage for two energy. It also gives you Shadow Strike, which is really cool. Shadow Strike in the Bakugan Pro TCG means that your opponent cannot reduce your stats. They can't play a card to reduce your B power or to reduce your damage. And there's plenty of cards that can do that. So Shadow Strike prevents all of that. And when you play this card, the Bakugan that has this gear attached to it will always have Shadow Strike, unless this card is negated or destroyed somehow and your opponent can play cards to do that. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but the cost of two for one and one is not good. Gears are better when their B power or their damage or both can equal the cost of the card. So we're losing some power because we're getting the bonus of Shadow Strike. If we look at the next card, Darko Destroyers, it's funny to see. So this one is Fusion Force. It was released in the set after Armored Alliance and it power crept out the concept of Scorching Swords. Swords. Darker Destroyers is two cost for 200 B and one damage with Shadow Strike. Ah. So if I have Darker Destroyers, I would never use Scorching Swords unless I really wanted to have lots of options with gears that have Shadow Strike and I would run three copies of Scorching Swords and three copies of Darker Destroyers because I wanted all my teammates to have Shadow Strike and I wanted to make sure it happened. Uh, so that's what we get here. And Darker Destroyers is good, like I said, because the two energy equals the 200 B. So there we go for those two two cost cards. Then we have from Shields of Astroia, the third set in the row with these ones is Darkest Knight. Two cost for 100 B, two damage, but this one also has an armor rating, which means when you are taking damage from an opponent and milling cards off your deck, if I was taking 10 damage, I would flip this over, count the card as one, count the armor as two, and then flip my next card being three. So it reduces the damage you take. And this one has text that says, if another card causes you to reveal this from your hand, give a Bakugan plus two damage. There are cards uh, in the darkest and in the aquas faction, the black and the blue, that will ask you to reveal a card in your hand that costs two, that costs five or more, and it gives you a bonus. And so this card would sync well with that type of strategy. You would play this card and reveal it from your hand when you play another card, get two extra damage, get the two on the card, and you're doing more damage to your opponent. And it's also a little bit of a flip with Darker Destroyers. Darker Destroyers has more B, Dark Darkest Knight has more damage. Okay, the next two cost card is Unholy Bow. Shields of Destroya, so it's with the same release as this one. Uh, two cost for 100 B and one damage with one armor. I don't think there's any reason you would ever play Unholy Bow if you had Darkest Knight. Unholy Bow is just a worse version of Darkest Knight. And even if you weren't gonna use the text on Darkest Knight to try to do uh, the strategy of revealing cards, it's still better than playing Unholy Bow. So Unholy Bow, sorry. But again, if you want a lot of cards that have armor, you can put three copies of each of these have a lot of extra armor in your deck, um, you can do that too. That's a strategy. Next, we have the three cost cards. Armored Alliance, common card, Dark Helm. Three energy for 200 B and two damage. This card would be cool and strong if one of these stats down below was 300 or three. If they were both 303, that would make this card really awesome. Uh, as it is now, it's, it's just not a super efficient gear card, not the best. Then we have Brutal Barrage from Fusion Force, which followed Armored Alliance set. 
three cost for 200 B2 damage. So same thing so far as Dark Helm, but you get this bonus. When you play this, if a player has no cards in hand, plus 500 B and five damage. And if you're playing with the black and the red factions, Darkus and Pyrus, uh, Darkus can focus on making your opponent discard their cards. And Pyrus can also focus on you playing a lot of your cards, not having any cards in your hand. Um, and this, it doesn't matter if it's you or your opponent. As long as somebody doesn't have any cards, you get 505 the turn you play it. So that's a cool strategy to go for. Uh, if you don't want that strategy, you just do Dark Helm, it's the same thing, or you run them both because you want that gear in your hand. All right, the next one, Twilight Axes. This one's a super rare. Actually, Brutal Barrage was a super rare as well. Uh, Twilight Axes is a super rare from Armored Alliance. It's a four cost for 303, but you get to play it for free if you're running the rapid fire strategy. There are a lot of cards in the Darkest and Pyrus factions that have this text, rapid fire. The second rapid fire card you play this turn is free. So ideally, you would have a one cost rapid fire card in your deck, whether it was black or red, and you would play that first, a one cost, a two cost, even a three cost, so that then you can play this four cost for free onto your Bakugan. Um, the trade-off is awesome, it's huge, and any rapid fire strategy with all those cards in your deck, you would use Twilight Axes and it would be strong. So that's a really good gear card. The next four cost is Dark Daggers. Four for 200 B and five damage. It's a damage focused gear card. If you are doing damage wins with the Darkest and Pyrus faction, or if you're trying to compete against damage wins, this would be good. Um, but like I've said before, I like my gears to have the B power to help me win the battle, not necessarily win the damage. Um, so a four cost for 200 B feels bad, um, but that's up to you how your strategy is running with that one. Then we have Baku Ruiner, which is a new Shield of Destroy card, latest set that was released and printed to us. Uh, four cost for 303, but when we play it, we give a Bakugan minus three damage. So we're taking away their damage if they won the battle. We can play this card before their damage goes through to us. We reduce it by three. Um, or again, if we're fighting against damage wins and somebody's making the condition of the victory to be damage, who has the highest, we give ourselves three and we reduce theirs by three. That's a six damage swing. That can be a good strategy there. But the four for 303 ongoing, not the most efficient trade. The next gear is a awesome rare from Armored Alliance. Five cost Mecha Claws, 400 B4 damage. So you can see there's a theme here with all these darkest gear cards. None of them. I don't think hardly any of them besides maybe Darku Destroyers has had a B power that is equal to the cost. And it's not different with Mecha Claws. Five for 404, it's really cool that both of these stats are 404. And the reason people play this card is because if you have no other cards in your hand, you may play it for free. And that happens when players are using the Sync strategy where they use Darkus and Aquos, blue and black cards that say, um, if you reveal a card in your hand that costs five, you get a thousand extra B power. So you're playing two cards at a time that sync up with each other, the text, the strategy, the cost. And so um, playing that strategy, you can end up playing two cards per turn pretty routinely. And when that happens, you get left with this card, five cost, you have no cards in your hand, you play it for free and you get 404. So it's a strong card. It's a strong gear that fits really well with that strategy. The next five cost is another super rare from Shields of Astroia, Searing Spear. Five cost for 100 B and eight damage. It has two armor points, so you reduce incoming damage by two if you flip this card from your deck when you're taking damage. And then it says when this flips from your deck. So this is you taking damage, milling cards. When you flip it, you count the two, and then you may pay two energy to choose a player to discard a card. So if you have two energy left as you're taking damage, you can pay it, your opponent discards a card. Um, but if you're not using that from your deck when you're taking damage, if it's just in your hand, to pay five energy for 100 B and eight damage doesn't feel super great. Well, it can feel really good because the eight damage is three damage more than the cost. 
Um, so think of it this way, in two turns, if you have this gear in play for two turns, the eight turns into 16 after two turns, but you still only paid five. And 16 divided by five is just like saying you get one, you pay one energy to get three, you know, point zero zero one damage. So one energy for three damage is a really good trade-off. So if you keep this gear in play for two turns, it has an awesome trade-off. It returned a lot of value to you. Not so much B power, obviously, but for the damage, yes. So that's a pretty cool card there. I don't know if we have any other gears actually that have that big of a swing with energy to damage, even B power. Like five energy for 800 B, I don't think that exists either. So uh, efficiency wise, this is an amazing damage gear card. And then the last gear in Darkest, Dark Sledge, six energy, 300 B, six damage. And when you play this, choose a player to discard two cards. This is a pretty cool gear. Uh, low B power, but the damage is big. And, you know, paying six to have a player discard two. Uh, there are Darkest cards that let you make a player discard a card for one energy. So let's just, let's just divide this energy out between all the stats and effects here. If discarding two cards costs two of the six energy, we have four energy left that is giving us 300 B and six damage. And if we do one of those four for the 300, one for 300 is an amazing efficient ratio trade, especially for a gear. And then we have three remaining energy to give us six damage. And three energy for six damage is the same as one energy for two damage. That's a respectable trade for any action card. So for value and efficiency, Dark Sledge is doing so much at one time. It's awesome and I think it's a really good card if you measure it that way. So what's interesting out of all these gears is Darkest Faction does not have any gears that gives you um, a B stat, a damage stat that equals the cost stat. So that's like a Telekinesis Crown, um, there's no card that gives you the highest level of efficiency in the Darkest Faction. There are cards that play off other strategies like Rapid Fire and Sync and discarding cards, and that's pretty cool. Um, but interesting to note here. Let me all know which Darkest Baku gear you all are going to pick out, which ones you like to use in your strategies, which ones you think are strong based on this list. I'd love to hear how you're using them. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. More content like this coming out soon.